Buckle up for Adam Sandler's You Don't Mess With The Zohan. Follow Zohan Devier, an Israeli commando-turned hairstylist, in a comedy packed with wild humor, unexpected turns, and a hint of romance with a Palestinian beautiful girl. Now grab your popcorn and let the Zohan chaos begin. In this scene from You Don't Mess With The Zohan, we find the main character, Zohan, who is a former Israeli counterterrorism commando, attempting to transition from his action-packed life to pursuing his passion for partying, hairstyling, and cooking. The dialogue is filled with humor and showcases Zohan's unique personality. Zohan then encounters Mr. Big Panachim, who questions why Zohan doesn't shake a bonbon. Zohan asserts that a real man can both shake a bonbon and cook, emphasizing his versatility. Mr. Big Panachim persuades Zohan to join the disco, promising to get hummus for him. The scene shifts to Zohan's encounter with his boss, Kapara, who's upset about some task. Zohan, however, claims he's on vacation and refuses to be involved. The conversation takes a comedic turn as Zohan assures that no one can hurt him. The narrative then transitions to a more serious tone as news about the terrorist phantom surfaces. Zohan expresses disbelief that they traded Phantom, and the conversation involves discussions about the trade and the perceived imbalance in the deal. Later, a military briefing takes place where a plan involving a team of eight men is discussed with the possibility of collateral damage. Zohan questions the approach and suggests a solo mission with minimal coverage to avoid unnecessary damage. Eventually, he agrees to undertake the mission. The scene concludes with Zohan interacting with two girls insisting that no one giggles at him. He receives a call from his parents, and during dinner, Zohan expresses his desire to leave the army and pursue a new life, much to his parents' surprise and disapproval. The scene continues with Zohan expressing frustration to his parents about the endless conflict in the region. He questions why he can't move on from his military service, emphasizing the 2,000 years of ongoing strife. Zohan's desire for a more creative and peaceful life leads to a suggestion from his father about working at an electronics store in America arranged by Uncle Levi. However, Zohan has a different aspiration. He wants to cut and style hair. This revelation shocks his parents, and they react with disbelief and humor using derogatory terms. Despite the resistance from his parents, Zohan insists that he finds hairdressing pleasant, peaceful, and nonviolent. The scene then shifts to a mission where Zohan, referred to as the Zohan, is instructed to apprehend the Phantom. The operation involves a dramatic confrontation, and Zohan successfully captures the Phantom while engaging in banter about the complexities of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. As Zohan completes the mission, he confronts the Phantom and engages in a conversation about the historical claims to the land. The Phantom, defiant, insists on the cause and declares his resistance. The scene continues with Zohan engaging in a seemingly intense fight with the Phantom. However, it becomes apparent that the fight is staged and Zohan fakes his death. He explains to the Phantom that capturing him again is futile due to the continuous trading of prisoners between the conflicting sides. Zohan reflects on his love for his country but expresses frustration with the never-ending cycle of fighting. He likens it to the futile aggression between Mr. Scrappy and Coco, drawing a humorous analogy about the absurdity of their conflict. As Zohan takes off his beard and disguises himself, he emphasizes the importance of not getting recognized as he proudly shows off his new hairstyle to his neighbors, the dogs. Zohan, now sporting the Avalon look, promotes the idea that he cares about his appearance while remaining approachable. The script takes a comedic turn as Zohan asks the taxi driver to take him to the Paul Mitchell Hair Salon, revealing his enthusiasm for pursuing a career in hairstyling. The scene concludes with Zohan and his new friend discussing his dream. The scene continues with Zohan having a conversation with a man in a bicycle accident. Zohan blames the other driver, claiming he cut him off and made him swerve. Amidst the argument, the other driver refers to Zohan as Mustafa, which Zohan dismisses, stating that it's not his name. The man responds with indifference, calling him salami, bologna, applesauce. The script then shifts to Zohan's visit to the hair salon to meet Mr. Paul Mitchell. However, the receptionist informs him that Paul Mitchell doesn't come in often. Undeterred, Zohan confidently asserts that he is perfect for the job and showcases his skills, emphasizing his expertise in cutting, styling, and making hair silky smooth. 
In a comedic twist, Zohan encounters a woman who recognizes the Avalon style and hilariously mistakes him for someone named Luke. Zohan plays along, pretending to be Luke from a soap opera. The Zohan threatens the receptionist, demanding to see Paul Mitchell and warning of destruction if he finds out he was hidden from her. Initially facing challenges in securing employment at various salons, Zohan's military skills lead him to a newfound friend, Michael, who offers him a place to stay. However, things take an unexpected turn when Michael discovers Zohan engaging in a romantic encounter with his mother, Gail, causing Michael to become distressed. At a disco, Zohan encounters a fellow Israeli named Uri, who recognizes him but agrees to keep his true identity a secret. Uri introduces Zohan to a block in Lower Manhattan inhabited by Middle Eastern Americans, with a clear division between a Palestinian side and an Israeli side. Zohan endeavors to secure employment in a struggling salon owned by a Palestinian woman named Dahlia. Initially permitted only to sweep floors for free, Zohan eventually proves his hairstyling skills by satisfying a senior client with a good haircut and additional services. This leads to Dahlia allowing him to become a stylist. Zohan's reputation swiftly spreads among the elderly women of Lower Manhattan, significantly boosting Dahlia's business. As Zohan establishes himself in the community, a corporate magnate named Grant Walbridge, Michael Buffer, becomes disturbed by the success of Dahlia's salon. Walbridge has been attempting to force out local tenants to make way for a roller coaster mall, setting the stage for a conflict between Zohan and the powerful businessman. Zohan's presence is discovered by a Palestinian cab driver named Salim, who harbors resentment due to Zohan taking away his goat in the past. Seeking revenge, Salim persuades his friends to help him eliminate Zohan. Their initial attempt, involving a failed bomb plot, forces Salim to turn to the Phantom for assistance. However, Salim's plan backfires when he ends up being manipulated by the Phantom, convincing him to come to New York to track down Zohan. Simultaneously, Zohan realizes he has developed feelings for Dahlia and decides to confess his true identity to Michael and his mother. He then opens up to Dahlia about his past as an Israeli counter-terrorist operative. Unfortunately, this revelation leads to Dahlia rejecting Zohan. In an effort to confront the Phantom, Zohan engages in a championship hacky sack game sponsored by Walbridge. However, the match is abruptly halted by news of an attack on the Middle Eastern bloc. Zohan quickly leaves the game to address the unfolding crisis. This sets the stage for a complex narrative involving personal relationships, revenge, and unexpected twists in the pursuit of Zohan's desire for a new life. Zohan arrives at the scene of the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians, successfully calming both groups and encouraging peace. During this reconciliation, Zohan also manages to mend his relationship with Salim, However, their efforts are interrupted when the Phantom makes an appearance, confronting Zohan with hostility. Despite the confrontation, Zohan refuses to engage in a fight. In a surprising twist, Dahlia emerges and discloses that she is the Phantom's sister. She persuades her brother to join forces with Zohan against a common enemy, arsonists who are revealed to be white racist rednecks hired by Walbridge. Walbridge's sinister plan involves instigating an inter-ethnic riot providing the perfect pretext for the construction of his new mall. As Zohan and the Phantom collaborate to thwart the arsonists and save the block, the Phantom admits a personal desire. He had always dreamt of being a shoe salesman rather than pursuing a path of terrorism. After successfully defeating the Rednecks and ensuring Walbridge faces legal consequences, the Phantom unintentionally causes the destruction of all the shops on the block. Despite this setback, the Israelis and Palestinians join forces leading to the transformation of the block into a collectively owned mall named the Peace and Brotherhood Fire Insurance Mall. Uri re-establishes his going-out-of-business electronics store, while the Phantom opens a shoe store within the mall named Fatouche's Kickin' Shoes. Salim is reunited with his goat and starts offering children rides beside the trendy toddler store. Zohan and Dahlia, having tied the knot, launch a joint beauty parlor named Dalohan. Zohan's parents make an appearance expressing approval for his new life. However, Zohan's father humorously requests that he cut his hair, a request Zohan happily fulfills. Outro, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. 
Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay awesome and catch you in the next video.